Wellington and Cash, Wellington and Cash. Hi ho the dairy, yo, Wellington and Cash. All right, so I uh, just got off the horn today with a nice couple from uh, Texas. We're actually relocating north, and uh, they're relocating to a state that is very high on my list of investigation, actually. It's just kind of, I'm not sure if the word is ironic, but it's very ironic because I've been talking a lot about this state to my better half. I said, man, we need to check this out. And uh, the, I don't know if it's irony, it might not be. Coincidence? I don't know. Anyway. The interesting thing is my wife's oldest brother uh, used to be an over-the-road truck driver, and he loved this state, the state's Michigan, just as FYI. He said, dude, he'd love to live in Michigan. Um, he, he said, dude, Michigan's awesome. So never been there. I plan on going there this summer to check it out. I'm going to bring the better half and all the kiddos, and we're going to probably rent someplace if we can. I don't know. Never been there. Don't know how it works. And go check out Lake Michigan. The idea that Michigan has beaches and sandy beaches with sandy bottoms. Uh, <laughs> I Look, man, I'm a doubting Thomas. I don't believe it. I see the pictures. I see the YouTube videos. Until I see it in my own very eyes, I'm going to doubt it. You know what I'm saying? Just like Thomas, St. Thomas with Jesus. Until he touches the uh, where Jesus was stabbed, he didn't believe. I don't either, man. Because, look, I'm from Maine. So, Bagel Lake probably the biggest lake in southern Maine and there's not sandy beach I mean I guess there's a couple of sandy beaches but they're not much and there's certainly the bottom isn't sandy it's uh it's weeds and moss and stuff Ugh, creepy and I lived on an island and our sandy beach wasn't sandy it was you know rocks so I'll believe it when I see it but anyway so these people looking at Michigan uh to retire and uh, the interesting thing was this guy had, he put his 401k in cash. It was about 200000 250000 bucks or so. Uh, their house had already sold. So it's like, you know, 300000 some of that sitting in cash. And they're like, and they're paying a the guy a fee. I said, look, you can do whatever you want. I wouldn't uh, necessarily just, I mean, they've been working with this guy for a long time. But, you know, we look at some of the funds in their portfolio and they're paying, um, the fees on the expense ratio on these funds are 85 bips on top of the 1% fee. I was like, Ugh. it's one thing if you're in accumulation mode. I'm not like it, but it is. A whole different ball game when you're going into retirement. And expenses are your biggest bugaboo. In fact, if your expenses, your total cost of living is 80,000 bucks, and you're paying over 10,000 for investment management fees, that's a pretty significant expenditure. Um, might want to think otherwise. So, you know, they ask me, what do, you, what do I think? And I don't tell people what they should do. I say, look, man, I keep it. I'm a simple, I'm just a caveman. I don't understand your new technology with NFTs and crypto. I just like the good old fashioned five letter ticker V W E L X. You get cash, you get Wellington, and you go on to your bigger and better things camping, fishing, hiking. You know, doing all that stuff and just let it be. So you think about it. These guys going to uh, go on Obamacare. And apparently up in their neck of the woods, there's a lot of good hostels and stuff. So, uh, you know, dense enough population that they should be able to get pretty good coverage. In fact, we looked up in their zip code under healthcare.gov for 2022. And uh, there's like 22 plans, silver plans. And they're going to talk about man J.O. up there, J.O. at MaximizeYourMedicare.com. Um, you know, he's in Ann Arbor. But they're going to talk to him once they get to that age and they're up there. Um, anyway, uh, once they get up there, I should say. It's, a, it's like tons of plans. I don't know how good these things are. That's not for me. That's for you to decide if it's worth it for you or not. I don't know. But, you know, they're going to get, if they keep their income down to a certain threshold, they're going to get 1500 bucks a month in premium credits, man. So for a silver plan, and I, off the top of my head, I can't remember the deductible and out-of-pockets, it's like 350 bucks a month for both of them. Actually, the crazy thing is their fees are going to, their expenses go higher once they're on Medicare. Nuts. Anyway, so you got cash on the side in a good old-fashioned checking or savings account because the cash has already been taxed. 
it doesn't flow back to your 1040, man. I, can, oh, I cannot stress this enough. They're going to take 60000 a year out of the Wellington. All right, they're going to pay 10% to Uncle Sam, whatever half wit gets, you know, they'll pay that. So on their 1040, their AGI, adjusted gross income, is 60000 bucks, which most likely means they're going to qualify for serious Obamacare subsidies. All right. <laughs> You know, they're living off 100000 a year, 80000 a year, 60 from their IRA, their Wellington fund. And then you got 300000 in cash. We'll just say a million bucks in Wellington. You need 60000 80000 a year to live on. There's a policeman. The policeman is on the premises. What is he doing in here? Anyone know that song? The policeman is on the premises. What is he doing in here? Run, Joe. Run, Joe. Oh, I forgot how the rest of that song goes. Policeman's at the door. Wait, run, Joe. Go. I forgot how it goes. Anyway, if you know that song, put it in the show notes, because I'll say you are a maven. Um, I'm not sure if that's the right word. Maven's a fun word to say. I'm a maven. Anyway, I like the police. FYI. I support the police. Do I support the Nazi police? No. And when I say Nazi, I really mean the fascists want to lock you up for not taking the vax. Um, but most police aren't like that. Most police are just regular middle class people trying to raise a family. So put that in your peace pipe and smoke it, BLM. Um, I just find it funny. You know, black lives matter only if a white cop kills a black guy. If, it's no one, if anyone else does it, the black lives don't matter. Only if a white cop. If it's not a white cop, eh, that black life didn't matter as much, apparently. Freaking nuts, man. It still pisses me off to this day. The lady who sang the national anthem at Obama's inauguration, the teenage girl, got mowed down in the streets of Chicago. No one gives a rat's behind about her, and yet George Floyd has made a martyr. And the whole thing is freaking insane. And you all who support this can kiss my big fat white behind because you're not black lives matter you're political that's all you are you're political hacks and it freaking ticks me off man the girl who sang at obama's inauguration was mowed down in the streets in chicago i, I no one cares no one cares but george floyd we're gonna put statues of that guy uh, it's it's nuts to me we're living in an upside down world. All right, so back to the issue here. The uh, <laughs> you got to get out of this Babylon, my friends. You know, you don't have to leave it specifically. You got to get your mindset out of it. Recognize that Babylon is run by evil fools. Recognize that it's trying to pull you in with hatred and trying to make. Look, the devil doesn't give two craps what side of the fence you're on he doesn't he just wants you at odds and the way to say you know something i'm moving i'm getting out of that one you know obviously physically it's important and we'll be doing that at some point um but mainly it's in your mentality your mindset yeah it's okay to get angry heck jesus got angry but you can't live your life as if you know if you voted harder that will make a difference it won't it won't, man. Babylon is evil. It's in control of the world. It's not that we don't know this. We do. But stop letting it, let it dictate what you've got to get done in your own mentality. I cannot stress enough. I wish you'd stay on point, Josh. Yeah, well, you know, ask for a refund. Because, uh, I see they got the fireplace right there. Wood stove. You need a wood stove, my friends. I'm telling you right now. My retirement house is going to have a wood stove. Number one priority. You know, I have a heat pump, maybe. I don't really want a heat pump, but I'm going to have a wood stove. Backup heat. Heat pump runs on what? Electricity. Electricity goes out. What don't you have? Heat. How are you going to heat your house without a wood stove? Uh, on a battery array? Are you crazy? <laughs> on your solar panels? You freaking nuts? On your wind turbines? You crazy? Nah. You don't heat your house with that kind of stuff, dude. You heat your house with good old-fashioned coal, kerosene, propane, or firewood. You need to have a plan of action to heat your home when the electricity goes out. But heat pumps are cost-effective. Yeah, you know, tell them about cost-effective when you're freezing to death because the power's out. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so these guys, 
So the guy asked, hey, when should I take my money out mechanically? I said, dude, just once a year. On the 1st of January, it doesn't have to be that day, but you get it. You call it Vanguard, Vanguard send me distribution. Okay, sir, you want that net or gross? I want it gross. Take 60000 out of Wellington, my IRA, give 10% to Sniffy Joe, and I, don't, I wouldn't send anything to half wit just because a lot of firms, they don't have it set up where they can withhold state taxes. The Vanguard, didn't, you couldn't do it for a number of states. I don't know if you can now, but when I was there, a lot of states, they couldn't withhold anyway. So, you know, until half wit, she'll wait her turn. But you send 10% to Sniffy Joe. All right, so 60,000 bucks minus 10%, 54,000 goes into your checking account. You spend that down when you run out of money, which probably be around September. You spend the rest from your regular checking account. And then come the 1st of January, you do it again. So you're at 60,000 as AGI. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room in case you need to go up, you know, because we don't want you to go above that $75,000 corridor, but it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. And so that way, if you do need to take more money out, you can without violating Obamacare threshold. And remember, I, I think there's still the, there's no cliff in 2022 for Obamacare premiums. Uh, tax credits, APTC, accelerated premium tax credits. I don't know what they'll be like in next year or the year after. I just don't know. So either way, we have uh, accelerated premium tax credits. You keep your income below that certain level. You get those. And then uh, and then if you only take 60000 on the front end, you, you'll be able to see come September, October, November. If you need more money, uh, you have some wiggle room. Ideally, you have enough in your savings account to complement or supplement the amount of money you've taken up from your IRA to see you through for the rest of the year. And then you get the APTCs, you know, and you're good, you're freaking golden, man. So think about it. These guys are gonna spend 18,000 a year without the APTCs, 10,000 a year on investment management, all right? That's 28,000 a year. They're only spending 100,000 a year or something like that. A quarter of their income would go to fees in healthcare. Reduce your fees. You can go a lot longer in your portfolio if your fees are reduced. So now they got, you know, instead of spending 100,000 bucks a year, which 28,000 would go to fees in healthcare, they're spending 72,000 a year. Does that make sense? Never mind, the taxes are now way lower as well. So instead of having to generate 100,000 a year, and then they got to pay tax on that money, it'd be an effective tax rate of 11%, $11,000 in taxes on 60, 70, 80,000 a year. But their AGI, because most of it's coming from cash, it's gonna be almost nothing. Well, I should say their taxable income. So they got cash, they have 60,000 from their portfolio. All right, so we take 60000 They're not 65, so their standard deduction, just for simplicity, will be 25000 bucks. So their taxable income, my friends, is 35000 bucks. Uh, I can't remember where the 12% tax bracket kicks in, but either way, at most, at most, their, ta- their taxes to the federal government would be, what, 3500 bucks at most. I mean, maybe 4000 bucks. On $60,000 distribution, can't shake a stick of of that, my man. Wellington and cash. But Josh, there's no small caps. Yeah. Josh, there's no international. Yeah. Josh, there's no high yield. Yeah. Josh, there's no crypto. Yeah. I don't care. You got large cap, dividend paying stocks, blue chip stocks, and you got corporate and government bonds. But Josh, if the interest rates go up, those bonds will get killed. Oh, for the love of all that is good, my friends. How many times do I gotta debunk this? Yes, when the bond rates go up, bonds go down initially. Look at any bond fund out there. I encourage you to do this. What happens in the second year after the Fed is raising? Just take a guess, man. What happens in the second year? You wanna guess? Uh, stop with this. Like, I don't want to be in bonds because the air rates go up. I'm like, what, are you going to spend that money? What, what, what's the problem? I literally don't understand it other than ignorance. And again, ignorance doesn't mean you're stupid. just means you don't know, which is why hopefully you're watching my channel so I can educate you on this stuff. 
Look at 94, look at 99. See what happened to bonds. Then look what happened the following years. I'm trying to 